Welcome everyone to the new Fly Fisher. I'm your host, Bill Spicer. On today's show, we're gonna talk about brook trout and dry flies. Now I'm talking brook trout that measure in the size of pounds, not inches. We'll talk about the equipment, the techniques, and everything you need to know to be successful. Stay with us, we'll be right back. On today's show, the new Fly Fisher crew is 60 miles to the south of Goose Bay, Labrador, at the headwaters of the renowned Eagle River at Eagle River Trout Lodge. Strategically located at a narrow section of the river, moving water directly in front of the fishing lodge yields huge eastern brook trout and northern pike. Within a short distance of the fishing lodge, anglers can fish virtually any type of water they prefer. Joining us today are guides Ivan Keeping, whom is affectionately known as Bubbles, and Dwayne Tucker. Both of these men are very experienced guides, which will assure me of a successful trip. Eagle River's double A-frame fishing lodge offers all aspects of home comfort for the angler. This Canadian fishing lodge has six double occupancy bedrooms, each complete with full bathroom facilities, including showers. Lodge also supplies all bed linens, towels, face cloths, and soap. Hearty home cooked meals are prepared by locally trained cooks and served in the main fishing lodge's dining room. In the evening, relax around an old fashioned wood stove, recount the day's exciting fishing action, or plan tomorrow's strategy. Eagle River Trout Fishing Lodge tries to ensure maximum comfort for the guests while still retaining the warm atmosphere. On the first morning, we headed a short distance upstream to the first spot which is known as Ivan's Hole. It didn't take long before the action started. A big pike. A nice pike. Yes, sir. Twice I went after him. He, uh, he showed himself once we heard a splash first, so I knew there was something there. I cast once to him, he showed himself. I cast second time and he took it. And it's a good pike. Not a bad start. Yes, sir. Area. Good job. Oh, he's a strong one. And he? And not bad for a start. Probably seven, eight pounds. Big old toothy critter. But oh boy, they really show themselves. <laughs> I love it. Put them in the water. Pike generally don't take too long to revive. <laughs> well, that's not bad. Five minutes, I get a good sized pike. Gotta love that anywhere. When searching for brook trout on the eagle, search out pocket water. These waters are also known as a rattle by the local guides. These areas have scattered boulders that often hold feeding trout in the slots and pockets around the boulders. Anytime the water is deeper than three or four feet and has some sort of obstruction to break the current, you will nearly always find trout. They will be feeding and taking whatever the current has to offer them. I decided to get back into the boat and try fishing deeper into the pocket water and work around the boulders. Boys, this guy got some big head shakes. Big head shakes. Oh, it's, you know why? <laughs> it's a big pike. <laughs> boy, oh boy. <laughs> I thought so when it first stopped. It just didn't quite act like a, a brook trout, but uh, oh boy, it's a good sized pike. He's taking some line on me now. Wowee. We've got a lot of wind today, easterly wind, which makes it for, it makes tough fishing. You won't have banner days when you got easterly wind, but generally what you get are aggressive fish, like this one that's, that's very large. And I'll just get my guide here. Ivan, but we call him Bubbles. He likes to be called Bubbles. <laughs> All right there, Bubbles. Oh. oh boy. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. There we are. 
Now, that ain't a bad start. It's not a bad start at all. Good sized pike, which they are bigger here, but that's not bad. And as you can see, we're, we're in a, like a run. They call them rattles here. It's nothing but large boulders. I'll get him down into the water. It shouldn't take long to revive him. No. And away he goes. Having two rods rigged up, one with a streamer and the other with a dry fly makes changing tactics much simpler. You never know when the fish will begin rising. Come on, take it. Got him. Ah, yes, sir. Ah, ah. Yes, sir. Got him. Woo. That Thank was God, incredible. That was just incredible. Now I got to manage some line here. I was casting farther before. Hey. See if we can get him in the in the net now. Oh boy, on a caddis dry fly. Oh my God, right there. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And this is a good fish. Huh? How big would you say? Oh, he's four for sure. Four for sure. Yes, four for a little sure. Better. Yep. yep. There. That is what it's all about. Dry fly fishing. It's the reason most of us got into the sport is for the dry flies. Oh, that's incredible. Now we're gonna get the, the number off the tag. We're gonna put them back in the net, put them back in the water, get a drink, and then we'll get the number off the tag and we're gonna record it. And he's about ready to go. Ready to go. And away he goes. That's the way to do it. You revive them until they're completely um, back to normal again, and then they can swim away easily and, and, and deal with other predators if they need to get away. So you don't want to release them too soon. No, you're going to try that rock again? Oh, I'm going to try that rock again for sure. We've seen more than one fish rising there, so let's try that again. The recommended equipment for the Eagle River system are nine foot number six and number eight weight medium action rods, along with large arbor reels with smooth drags for fighting these large fish. The lines that are recommended are weight forward floating lines matching the rod and reel for dry fly fishing, along with sinking tip and full sinking lines for fishing subsurface. The insect hatches on the eagle are quite healthy. Both mayflies and caddisflies can hatch at the same time. On this particular trip, the caddisflies were more abundant and the fish were eagerly eating them. Wading on the Eagle River can be treacherous due to the large boulders. It's advisable to bring along a wading staff. This will act like a third leg and make for safe and enjoyable fishing. One of the most effective stream tactics is to cast a fish upstream. Trout will always face into the current. Their vision is quite good on the sides, above, and in front but not very good behind them. This tactic will allow you to get quite close to the fish and remain undetected. Watch how close to my guide this fish is. Okay, let's start walking out towards them. I don't want to let him get in, into, the, into the fast water again. All right. Okay, he's just about ready. He's turning on his side. Yes, sir. <laughs> Another good size brook trout. Now let's, oh boy, this is something else. This is <laughs> on a dry fly. <laughs> oh boy, look Here at that. Are, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> look at that. That's unbelievable, on a dry fly. Beautiful. Beautiful. Good, three and a half, four pounds. Took it, actually stuck his whole head out. I could see it. Let's get him down into the water. Face him upstream. I'm gonna wait till he till he kicks. And he's kicking now already. And away he goes. Oh my. That's the way to do it, isn't it? <laughs> We decided to head back to the lodge for some needed rest and to plan the next day's strategies. The next morning we decided to head right back to the same area we fished the previous day, hoping the fish were still rising to the dry fly. It's first thing in the morning, and uh, what I'm going to do first is observe. 
It's no different in Labrador than it is in Pennsylvania or Ontario. You first take a look at what's happening. I have an idea what's happening, but I want to make sure we have some caddisflies coming off and a few mayflies. We have observed some uh, fish activity as far as rising is concerned, but we got to determine first what is happening before we barge into the water. Oh, come on. Ooh. Oh, he did get it. <laughs> Jumped right out of the water. Jumped right out of the water, my goodness. <laughs> I didn't think he had that, but all of a sudden I didn't see my fly anymore, so I thought I'd better strike. Oh, yeah. Okay, Dwayne, anytime you're ready. Oh, no. Right at the net. Right at the net. What can I say? <laughs> what can I say? And I got him. It's all right. I got him anyways. All right. Anytime, Dwayne. Good man. Look at how colored this one is. Dry fly fishing at his best. Labrador brook trout. Now he, he, I thought he'd be bigger because he fought incredibly hard. Went on some good runs and just an incredible fight. And away he goes. That was, that was good. Perfect, buddy. <laughs> Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much. Recommended flies to bring with you when visiting the Eagle River are Suddlers, Leech Patterns, Deceivers, Woolly Buggers, and a selection of trout dry flies, including Royal Wolves, Adams, Goddard Caddis, and Elk Hair Caddis. The setup that we used for streamers was a sinking tip line to a 4 foot 12 pound leader then the streamer. The dry fly setup was a floating line to a tapered 9 foot leader to a 3x tippet then the fly. Got him! First cast! All right! All right, now we've seen the fish come up once and I, was, I got a really good drag free drift and uh, he took it. Now he's got down pretty far on me and I'm a little concerned about this because right now I got a sore knee and I don't know if I can chase him so we'll see what happens. Well, he's moving back upstream. This is good. I want everybody to notice how I keep the line high when you get so much line out. You don't want it to touch the water. That adds extra drag to your line and it will pull harder on the hook. And you can break your, your, your tippet or straighten the hook out. Good man. Good man. And this is a bigger fish. Yeah, he is a nice fish. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes. Yeah, big male fish. And they're already starting to turn color. This is surprising to me. There we go. Big, if you look at the hook and the jaw, that's how you can tell whether it's a male or a female. A female would have a straight jaw and the mouth would be smaller. Very good fish. And go the length of my arm anyways. Come on, buddy. And he'll, uh, yes. Make his way over to, to the fast water and away he goes. Got a fish, got a fish rising up a, ahead of me here. And because it's upstream, I'm gonna have to strip the line in to ensure that I get a drag free drift. If I allowed the, dr the line just to collect, and I get a hit, I'd have too much slack out, not allowing me to set the hook properly. So what I do is I pick my spot, cast to it, and then as it's coming towards me, I'm stripping the line in. This allows 
me to have a, almost a straight line to the fly. And if a fish takes it, I'll be able to set the hook properly. If I don't do this, too much line collects and I won't be able to set the hook. We're casting to rising fish. We're not blind casting. We're waiting till we see something break the surface and then we cast it to it. This particular guy here, he's, he's come up two or three times. And so we finally went over and got him. This is a strong fish. This is a very strong fish. Gotta get him back on my reel. You're up the leader. Anytime, sir. Yes, sir. Now, that is. Yeah, that's a better fish. That's about three pounds. And if you notice back behind the fin here, that's an old pike mark. He's been grabbed by a pike, which there is lots of them around here. Excellent fish, excellent fish. Very dark back, so you don't, you don't see them very well in this dark water, so. Had an old guide on a salmon camp show me this, just rub their bellies a little oh, bit. Yeah, works every time. Works every time and away he goes. And empty my, my shirt sleeve out. <laughs> Water's a little bit chilly, but not too bad. Not too bad. That was excellent. Again, what I did, I cast out. I wasn't in my right spot. So I pulled back on my fly to a better position and then let it float down. And that's when the fish took it. Right in there. And he took it. Yes, sir. Too, yeah, I've seen that. <laughs> oh, yes. Dry fly fishing at its best. I've never had it this good. Good man. Good man. Another nice, Another nice male, huh? Nice, nice fish. <laughs> yes. Good net man. <laughs> <laughs> and again, gotta love it. My goodness. Healthy fish. On rising, rising to caddis flies, it's never been better as far as I'm concerned. Just at lunchtime, decided to take one more cast. And sure enough, produced a good fish. It's a long fish. That's a long fish. Yes, sir. Now I want people to notice we're not losing too many fish because of barbless. Uh, if you fight a fish properly, there's no reason why you shouldn't take them. Barbs should not make a difference. Decent fish. How do you like that, eh? Now he's beat up a bit, his, his, his fins are a little tore up. He might've had a run in with a pike or something. But yeah, very, very nice fish. And I, and I see a pike mark right there on the side of him, just above the back fin. Little scarred over mark. Now Dwayne, my guide, said he saw a fish rising directly below me. What I'm gonna have to do now is introduce some slack so I get a drag free drift towards the fish. It's gonna be a little tricky. Uh, he's closer than what I'd really like him to be, but I have no choice as to where I am. So I'm gonna to try to get him now, and he's directly below me. Got him. That's the one I seen too. That's the one that you've seen, isn't yep, it? that's a. Yes, sir. That, that is just so neat. Now, what I did there, as I cast out across farther, and every time I ran out of space, I just pulled the fly back and let it float again. Now, versatility is everything. Presentation is everything. If you don't present the fly properly, they're gonna refuse it. And today, the name of the game is dead drift. The same as if you threw a marshmallow in the water. You want it to run the same speed as the, as the current. Any kind of drag, they seem to be uh, refusing. Now this isn't nearly as big as the other fish, but it just shows you that by changing methods of what you're doing, you can produce fish. You got him. <laughs> okay, just set him down in the, in, the, in the water there so it'll calm down. He's just a little upset with me. 
But again, another terrific fish. This seems to be the average. There are many bigger ones, but this seems to be the average. And away he goes. That was terrific, that was terrific. Again, presentation is everything. If you don't present it properly, they're gonna refuse it. Wow, <laughs> wasn't that incredible? Well, I hope you learned lots about dry fly fishing today and make Labrador one of your next adventures. For more information on today's show and others in our series, visit us on the web at thenewflyfisher.com. From all of us here at The New Fly Fisher, thanks for joining us, tight lines, and we'll see you next week. Hi, I'm Tom Rosenbauer. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this and you wanna see more, subscribe and you can get all our weekly uploads.